Mishmash! Hey ya. Today I'm doing something far out of my comfort zone. I got a box of blooded Trader Guardsmen as kind of a late Christmas present. Just another pebble on my mountain of plastic. And I figured that since that I really do want to play Kill Team, and uh, man I have so many other miniatures to paint, I'd end up painting these guys to more of a tabletop standard. Or speed painting. If you're familiar with my content, then you probably know that I really prefer hunkering down and overthinking every tiny detail in my miniatures. But, I have stated previously that one of my big plans for this year is to practice methods I'm less comfortable with. For a while now, I've basically just been doing the same sort of style where it's kind of all over the place. I'll end up doing insane detail on one portion of a miniature, and for the other part, I'll just use one paint. I really want to try to spread my decrepit little wings as an artist this year, so I guess we're going to be doing this. But I will say this time I did kind of have a plan, and that's something I almost never do. The biggest part about painting these guys is I really didn't know what color scheme I wanted to go with. I knew that I wanted to paint these guys blue, Why are you blue? Ugh. but I didn't want them to be zinch related, so the Mobian 21st fatigues are kind of perfect. Also disclaimer, the Ogren and the Commissar guy I'm saving for a separate follow-up video. Expect that next week. I know, it's a little disappointing, but boohoo, it's my channel, go cry in the street. And these guys look too cool to just simply speed paint. But enough exposition, let's get into the actual painting. Like always, here's a little list of all the paints I used. But don't expect this video to be much of a painting tutorial, as more of a painting lesson. Like always, there's plenty of parts in this video that I really feel like I could have gone back on, or I really wish I did differently. So to start things out, I am actually using a speed paint. I'm using Tyrian Navy from Army Painter, and I really like this color. Initially I was a little light, watering it down just a little bit so I could do two thin coats. As I usually do this with any sort of contrast or speed paint that I'm not super duper familiar with. But after applying this to a few of the characters, I ended up just using this straight out of the bottle. Applying it better safe than sorry is something I've become more cognizant to when it comes to miniature painting. Since I put out a video per week, most of my time painting nowadays is on camera, and that means that I see every single mistake blown up in my face. But overall, I think this color turned out really well, especially over a Xenothal Prime. Admittedly, it's a little bit more rough and speckled than I'm used to, but I think this adds a lot more character. But moving on, we're painting the boots. In this, I used a little bit of Vallejo Game Color Black Ink mixed with some hardened leather from Army Painter. I kind of mixed the ratio up as I kind of wanted their boots to each look a little different. Mostly to wear and tear, but originally I wanted these guys to look like they stole their fatigues. Doesn't exactly make sense, but I don't know. I think it kind of fits. On some of the gun pouches and holsters, I'd use snakebite leather. Whenever I'm using hardened leather, I usually end up using it as a mixture. Snakebite leather, I think, just works better on its own. I would also apply this to all the gun straps and all the rifles. And as you can probably see here, I'm not too worried about getting this on the actual armor plating. The reason being is I decided not to use any speed paint or contrast paint. Instead, I used Vallejo model color dark gray. This was almost a first crack in my armor when it comes to speed painting. Had I used a contrast or a speed paint similar to this color, it would have saved me a lot more time and effort. But I just can't help myself. Though at the same time, using this over a contrast paint allows me to be far more messy. I don't have to worry about fixing up the gradient that I created using the Xenothal Prime. For all the areas that I want to be metallic, I'm using one coat of Leho Model Color Black. This is still my favorite black color in the game. As you can see, I still had some Kettle Helm parts left over. I ended up making a Medic and a Berserker. At least I think this is a Medic. Come to think of it, I can't imagine Trader Guardsmen having Medics. I don't think they're that benevolent. As you can see, there's a lot of places to coat on the Berserker. The biggest thing that I ended up doing with a lot of these guys is I really mixed up which parts were the grey armor and which parts would be metallic. Some of the bracers on the other characters would end up having the same grey color as the ceramic armor. But for guys like this, I feel like scrap armor makes more sense. This is part of why I love Kill Team. Switching up just a little bit of the colors can really make a difference in terms of character. We're also going to want to coat this over all the guns. Primarily around the magazine and the little back feet area, as well as the barrel and underbarrel. I'm going to be avoiding the casing and the butt of the gun. Since these are Hellbores, I want to have a wooden finish to them. Also, I'd like to mention that Hellbores are by far my favorite LAS gun. 
For the casing of the gun, I'm mixing just a little bit of ball red mixed with black ink. You could easily use Flesh Terror's red for this, but I just don't have it on me. For these little bracers along most of the guardsman's arms, I'm painting the straps using a little bit of Rhinox Hide. I also mix just a little bit of Rhinox Hide over the black areas. I think it's fun to use browns to undercoat metallics, it makes them look a little bit more dirty. I also find that brown colors work better as undercoats for goldish metallics. A warmer undercoat typically helps with a warmer overcoat sticking out. To paint the wooden finish on the hellbores, I ended up using wildwood, but I don't think this looked very good. It was a little too dark to really see through. I then went back in on all the wooden areas using a little bit of dark ivory from Procryl. The idea was just to create some really stark scratches just to make sure that color pops out a little bit better. For all the skulls and heraldry that looks bone related, I used some pallid bone from Army Painter Speed Paints. This color is really, really impressive on its own. Not only is the color really impressive, the finish is superb. It looks like actual bone. For all the wrist and leg tape, I'm using a mixture of 50-50 strong and light tone from Army Painter. For the surgical glove for my medic, I used some red tone watered down significantly using Lamy and Medium. I was okay with how this looked, so I ended up mixing blood for the blood god with sepia ink, and once again watering it down with Lamian medium. This looked sinister. For all the flesh areas, I ended up using my red tone mixed with a little bit of the purple tone. I'd also water this down with Lamian medium, as to give kind of an undercoat. And as kind of an alternative, I ended up using Magos purple for other characters, just to kind of mix things up. Once these undercoats are established, I then go over all the areas that had flesh with peachy flesh from Army Painter. For the few miniatures that actually showed a lot of flesh, I think this worked out pretty well. For most of the miniatures that ended up just having helmets, I didn't even bother painting the eyes within. I think it looks fine as is. Also, I love how this face sculpt looks. I think a good rule of every evil kill team is that they need their Starscream phenotype. This next part is a little rough, as I kind of messed up. I used Griffhound Orange, as I really like how blue and orange look together. But the way it finished was really, really patchy. I did not like how this looked. I then decided to take kind of a gamble and I used Magma Droth Flame. This was a good idea. The consistency is better, but I really didn't want this to be so bright. It was around this point that I remember that shade paints exist. This is something we'll be fixing later. For the grenades, I ended up using Death Guard Green. For the pin and release, I'm just base coating using some Vallejo Model Color Black. I was pretty happy with how these guys were turning out so far, but I didn't exactly know how I wanted to finish them off. But luckily, I got a little delivery at my doorstep at this time. I ended up picking up the Metallic series from Procryl, and no, I still haven't gotten the base kit. I, I'm weird, I know. But I gotta say, confidently and honestly, these are the best metallic paints I've ever used. Especially Dark Silver, because oh my god, look at how this applies. I usually end up judging metallic colors based on just how sad I'll be when I have to shade them, and this is a Herculean task. I mean, just, th th that's kind of absurd, right? That's a little absurd how good that looks. Okay, enough simping. I ended up using this paint on the chainmail, breastplates, armor plates, pretty much everything that has to do with armor. We'd also use this over all the black areas on the guns. Ironically, this paint ended up saving me a lot of time and effort. It really was a speed paint. Any sort of area that I knew was going to be some form of silver metallic, I ended up using this. Pretty much everywhere black, I intend to paint with silver colors. 
But for the bladed weapons, I'm using Pro Curl's regular silver, rather than the dark. I'm also a huge fan of this color, though I do have to use a couple of coats to get an opaque finish. The dark silver kind of spoiled me. For some other sections of the armor and some of the accessories that are metallic, I used the silver from Pro Acryl. I'm not doing anything too fancy, I'm just dry brushing. Looking back, had the metallic showed up a little earlier, I wonder if it would have looked better if I dry brushed the metallics first and then did the armor and the fatigues. But after having all my fun with dark silver, I ended up using the bronze. For this, I ended up painting a lot of the little skulls on the hellbores, and there's no shortage of them. Same with any little areas that have tokens, or skulls, or belt buckles. I felt this color really, really complemented the silver and blue, so I ended up using this on the front of the plasma guns as well. Hell, I think the metallics really kind of saved these guys. They contrast well color theory-wise, but additionally, they really kind of bring out the miniatures more. Their armor is rather dull, and it doesn't really change much from here. I think this is kind of perfect for tabletop ready though. The flashiness of the metallics makes them stand out. We really don't have to do much work on the armor. Possibly the best example of this is the sort of Kettle Helm Berserker guy. Adding this to the pendant on the front, it really makes this guy stand out. Picking up the Chaos Stars is also a really good usage of this color. Pretty much anywhere that has a good balance of cool colors being the blue and the silver, we'll want to balance using just a little bit of the brass color or the orange color. Changing gears a little, I'm just painting some of the accessories on these characters. For my comms officer lady, I'm just painting all the wires using some dark ivory. This allowed me to use some contrast colors over. It's really simple, really effective. And for how much I talked about balance using those four previous colors, I ended up kind of breaking away just a little bit just to have a little bit more fun. I ended up mounting this Eldar head to the little spike trophies on my sergeant's back. So for this, I ended up painting this using Beal Tan colors. I very carefully used two thin coats of Kirindras green over the noggin. The consistency for this paint is very weak considering it's a contrast color. I would not trust it to do one thick coat. For the ponytail, I ended up using a little bit of ball red, and for the little joint separating the green and the red, I used a little bit more bronze. Over all the muzzles on the hellbores, I added some black legion. I really like how this finished over the dark silver, and this is something that I definitely want to use from some sort of evil knights. Now for the wacky part. For this, I'm shading pretty much everything except the blue fatigues. What I'm using is a mixture of Oblivion Blackwash with Sepia Ink, and just a little bit of Lamian Medium. We want this to be very dirty, and this kind of coats over everything in the miniature, and it really blends everything together. This dulls down the metallics, but still allows it to keep just enough alluring shininess to keep visual interest on the model. Just to reiterate, I mean wash everything except the blue, even the guns. I used the wash over the blue color on a test model, but I felt like it dulled it down a little too much. Once it dried, I was really, really satisfied. I felt kind of accomplished, to be honest. I think the dullness of the armor really makes these guys kind of look corrupted. To me, it looks a lot like the soul and pride of serving under the Imperium was literally sapped from these guys. Plus, I think this is just a good example of why washes can really make a difference on a miniature. To take a little backpedal, I'm doing some of the details that I really should have gone over earlier, but I feel like it's okay to kind of group them together at the end here. The fur patterns on some of the characters, I ended up just using Gore Grunt of Fur. I added a little dry brushing of some dark ivory, but very, very light. For this head that's dangling from my Berserker guy's little pendant thing, I ended up just taking a little bit of Pro Curl Dark Flesh, and I mixed it with a touch of black. The black was painted into the recesses, and the dark flesh was just painted over it. Basically just pseudo-blending. I'd also end up painting the undersides of all the fur pelts using dark flesh. And for both the head and the pelts, I'd end up shading the flesh areas using a little bit of red tone mixed with some black ink. I'd also have this watered down significantly. I then decided to paint the plasma guns by watering down some dead white. I'd paint this directly into the grills. Using this color, I'd also airbrush some kind of cheap OSL. I definitely should have covered some of the areas using cardboard or airbrush putty. 
but I was trying to be speedy with it, so yeah, it looks okay. Originally, I was going to do lime green for the plasma guns, but with the Beel Tan head, I decided on a purple color. For this, I mixed some Leviathan purple and ball red, roughly about 3 to 1. I then spray over the entirety of the plasma gun and the OSL lighting. I had to be very careful with this, as doing too much would completely ruin the effect. Honestly, it's been kind of a minute since I've used my airbrush for anything other than priming, so this was kind of weird. Once I was done with the purple, I went back in with the dead white, and I used it as a wash. I'd also end up painting dead white into all the eyes of the gas mask wearers, and I'd paint these in using Karen Dross Green. The final guy of the set that I wanted to paint is the Sniper. He's got a really cool cloak, and I decided to paint it using this camo pattern. Like the rest of my guys, I used Magma Droth Flame to start this out. Once that was dry, I ended up painting these really blotchy details using Dark Sun Yellow from Two Thin Coats. I'd be sure to go over twice, as this color is really thin. I'll be doing the same using Dryad Bark, and though it doesn't really show up well on camera, it'll look fine once the shade is applied. We'll then be doing the same using Dark Grey. Basically, you just want to keep painting these simple blotches and rules of three. Make sure they intersect one another, but not too much. As a final color, I used a little bit of Rhinox Hide mixed with black. These lines I'm keeping a little bit slimmer than the rest and making them a little bit more jagged. We can get away with sharper details on the colors that have better consistency. Doing this with the yellow would be really, really difficult. Once you're done with that, you should have something like this. And though it looks a little bit rough now, once we apply the shade, it'll look great. But before we do that, I wanted to add a decal. I thought it would look cool to place the Chaos Star over one of the spikes. And once the shade is dry, goddamn, this guy looks great. But I'd say it's about time that we get these guys based. For this, I'm using Vallejo's Brown Earth Texture Paint. We'll use a fair amount, but we don't want it to pile up too much. To keep the painted areas from being too stained by the texture, I ended up using my little silicone sculptor. This allowed me to be a lot more dexterous when it came to pushing the paint around the feet. Once the earth texture was dry, I ended up shading using a little bit of Griffhound Orange mixed with Gorgrunta fur. This will take a while to dry, but once it does, dry brush over using some Tau Ochre. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a heavy dry brushing, but it certainly isn't a light one. Make sure this really catches on the raised edges. After that, we'll apply some Elmer's glue to the bases and put on some shrubs that are appropriate for the setting. I ended up using two different ones as I think a little variation is interesting. And to kind of cheat my way to the end, I ended up using a little bit of Vallejo Pigment Dark Ochre. Wouldn't be a speed painting video if I didn't use a little bit of weathering powder. We'll be applying this around the base and speckling areas, some over the shrubs, and just a little bit towards the bottom half of the miniature. And for funsies, I ended up using some of my blood effects on the Berserker guy. This is just me, for the third time, plugging my gore video. But after all that cool stuff, it's about time we paint the rims black, and we have the grand reveal. I wasn't exactly excited for this one, but I have to admit, this is really, really fun, and I think these guys look excellent. There's definitely a tiny voice inside my head that is shrieking for me to do more, but I'm gonna have to shut that down. The real work will go to the Ogren and the Leader. But as far as my speed painting techniques go, I gotta say, I think this paid off. There were definitely times during the video I kinda broke the unwritten rules of speed painting, especially painting the sniper's cloak. But I think the biggest thing is, is I really didn't highlight these guys at all. And I don't really think they need it. I think they look fine as is. We all kinda have that little gremlin in the back of our mind that tells us that we need to do more for our miniatures. Uh, at least I do. And at first I thought the best idea was to kind of silence it or tune it out. But I think rather than silencing it, I just got to take all those constructive ideas and apply them later on to other miniatures. Thankfully getting back into wargaming has kind of forced me to stop overthinking so much and just kind of get these guys done. But hey, it was fun and I hope it was fun for you. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more to see more videos like this. It really helps the channel out. 
Next week I'll try to get the follow-up video out, as well as something else, but we'll see. I'm kinda going through a phase of aimless creativity, but I have a lot of ideas and we'll just see which one sticks. I think you'll like it regardless. Anyway, I think it's about time I stop flapping my beak, and I'll leave you with a mishmash, kit bash, and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya.